Today, we're taking a look at the Zima Board 2, the latest innovation from Ice Whale Tech, and it has quite a few improvements over the original Zima Board and the Zima Blade. And those are two products I've already reviewed in previous videos, turned into mini home servers, and they were super cool. But there's a lot of new functionality that you can pull off with the latest Zima Board 2. We're gonna dive into all of it in this video. So of course we're going to unbox it, but we're also gonna be taking it one step further and turning this in to the ultimate home command center for my apartment. We'll of course be running Casa OS so we can turn this thing into that home NAS, download all of our files to it, use it as the true data backup that we want with something like this device. And we're also gonna be installing Plex as a media server, installing Home Assistant to run all of the smart devices within my apartment. So I'm super excited to see what this thing can do in such a tiny package. Uh, so let's just jump into it. So let's start things off with unboxing the Zima Board 2. And we'll kick it all off with the accessory kit. So we get our power adapter, which is just a 12 volt barrel plug with any adapters you might need for wherever you're going to use your Zima Board 2. We also have a SATA Y cable splitter, which allows you to connect two external HDDs or SSDs to the Zima Board 2 and then the Zima Board itself. And the packaging on this thing is so eco-friendly, super nice, all cardboard, minimal plastic, like minimal tape on the outside of the box, that band that can be reused to enclose the Zima Board 2 itself. And you can even use the box as a mounting mechanism for the Zima board and a couple of SSDs to turn this into a super eco-friendly NAS. Get a little letter in there from Ice Whale Tech, and then we have the Zima board itself. And this thing feels amazing in the hand. It is a solid chunk of aluminum. You know this thing's gonna perform really well. We have our PCIe 3.0 uh, slot on the side of the card, perfect for hooking up a graphics card with running really demanding workloads on this thing. DisplayPort 1.4, mini DisplayPort cable. Uh, we also have a dual two and a half gig ethernet two USB 3 ports, and then our power connector as well. And then we have all the SATA connections on the other side. So this thing is super sleek. The design is awesome. And just to showcase to you guys what I mean with using the box itself as a mounting mechanism for the Zima Board 2 and a couple of SSDs. I don't have any SSDs to showcase it, but you can see how the Zima Board slots right in. The SSDs would slot in as well. And then you can connect everything with all your cables. So just really nice thought there from Icewell, but we're not gonna use the cardboard and we're going to use our existing uh, HDD mounting cage that we got with the Zima Blade uh, and use it with this Zima Board 2. And the connection process is super simple. So we got two four terabyte uh, WD red drives in there, hook up the Y cable splitter to the Zima Board 2, then connect the power and data transmission cables uh, to our dual drives. And that's as easy as it is when it comes to the setup. Those cables, and that's it. Final step, of course, is to get this thing hooked up to power and ethernet. So we're gonna do that as well. Now I am running all of my uh, home networking setup. So I have a Synology uh, and a Ugreen NAS hooked up to my network, plus now the Zima Board 2, which shows up as a Zima Cube for whatever reason in software, but everything's hooked up over gigabit ethernet versus really utilizing that full two and a half gigabit ethernet that comes standard with the Zima Board 2. Now to start things off, let's first just set this thing up as a really cool home server NAS type build. So the first thing we're going to do is actually put our dual uh, four terabyte hard drives into RAID and set up a nice storage pool to upload whatever we want to that. Photos, files, leave it in there on a network attached, just really secure data backup. And we're going to use RAID 1 for this to have dual, uh, uh, both drives um, acting in in tandem where we'll have all the data split between both drives or you know uh, rather than RAID 0 where it would actually split the data between both drives so getting the full 8 terabytes of storage but if you lose any one of those drives you lose all of your data whereas with RAID 1 we can have the data on both drives we lose either of the drives and all the data is still there. So we'll create that storage pool and now it's as simple as going to our Zima pool using the shared functionality within uh, Casa OS. And then we can just connect via SMB to either a Mac or to a Windows PC. 
upload whatever files we want directly from our computers. You can also drag and drop into the web UI of Casa OS, uh, but that's as simple as it gets. And now you have completely uh, uh, secure, fast, four terabytes worth of network attached storage on, uh, on your home network. And you can go up to 36 terabytes with this thing, so dual 18 terabyte drives connected to the Zima War 2, which is awesome. You also have the PCIe 3.0 slots. You can hook up things like NVMEs, additional SSDs, even a graphics card, which is something I definitely want to take a look at in future videos. But when it comes to the other components, the other software pieces I really wanted to look at in this video, the App Store on the Casa OS ecosystem is immense. It has a plethora of apps out there, either configured by Icewell Tech themselves or put out there by the community. There's some amazing apps. And the two that we're going to install on this video are Plex and Home Assistant, like I mentioned at the beginning. So Plex as like a home media server. They're all your movies, all your TV shows, all your home videos onto the uh, uh, Zima board Plex server, and then also using Home Assistant to run all of our smart home tech. So any smart light bulbs, smart switches, smart outlets, all connected through Home Assistant and can run automations and all of that good stuff. So kicking things off with Plex, we're just going to upload or, or, or kick off the Plex installation on the Casa OS server. So you can just click on the Plex icon within Casa OS. It'll open up a local Plex instance. Um, that is running on your IP address of the Zima board 2 and then we're going to actually go into the Plex icon and change some settings around so that we can access that additional four terabytes of storage. So we're going to add uh, the Zima pool that we created to our Plex uh, application so that it has access to that environment and then just note what it's going to look like on Plex. We're going to add Zima Pool uh, from a Plex perspective so that it can then show up within our Plex server. And then when we go in there, we can click on Zima Pool for our library and then it'll pull in whatever video. So the, the movie that we uploaded uh, to the, the Zima Pool before via SMB now shows up on Plex. And it's as easy as that. Now, whatever Plex accounts you're using, you can access all of these, you know, in this case, other videos. It can be movies, it can be TV shows. We can access that all via Plex for web, so either on a PC, on a laptop, on your TV, on your mobile, and have all access to those videos stored on your local server wherever you are, which is an awesome feature, an awesome capability of such a tiny little computer. And you can, of course, optimize this with GPU acceleration if you did connect a GPU via the PCIe slot. Again, something I definitely want to take a look at. Let me know down in the comments below if that's something you guys want me to take a look at. But we'll also take a look at uh, Home Assistant. So we'll get Home Assistant set up again, as simple as clicking on the application within the Casa OS manager on your device. And now we're just going to, yeah, it's going to auto find whatever other devices it can find on the local network. So of course, whatever your Zima War 2 network is connected to, any other devices that it just automatically can identify and configure via Home Assistant, it will. So you can see our Smart TV 4K and stuff like that. But we're also going to then add some devices that didn't automatically pull in. So I have a bunch of TP-Link Tapo accessories that I'm going to connect. So we're going to add TP-Link. Um, I have Tapo accessories, but it's going to ask us to connect these uh, via a, a TP-Link um, smart home. Uh, so TP-Link smart home will be what kind of service we're running within Home Assistant to connect all of those devices going to try to figure out, I don't know the exact, exact host name for TP-Link within my uh, home network, but it'll figure it out, it'll find it. It does, and then it will pull in whatever accessories once we log into our TP-Link account that it can find. So the first one is a smart plug that I have hooked up in my living room that I have a bunch of uh, uh, devices connected to. And the awesome part about Home Assistant is we can see all of the power uh, pull, wattage, amperage, voltage coming out of that smart plug. Super cool feature. I'm also going to add a couple of smart bulbs in there as well. One in my living room as a bookshelf and one within my bedroom, which is just my nightstand lamp bulb. Super easy, breezy functionality with Home Assistant to get everything hooked up and configured. But like I mentioned, you can see all of your power usage and everything on the smart plug over on the right hand side. It's just cool functionality that you don't get from a lot of other systems. And I'm gonna show you now what it actually looks like. Super quick and responsive. You click it on the web UI and it immediately happens 
on the device. So in about 45 minutes, we completely set up our Zima board too, including hardware, our shared drive for our NAS setup, as well as the Plex media server and home assistant. So an incredibly user-friendly process to get this thing set up and configured both from hardware and software, and it takes no time to get this thing up and running. Now, when it comes to the real driving force behind the Zima board too, it's improved performance. So we jump up to an Intel N150 CPU, a four core, four thread CPU that gives nearly three times the performance of the original Zima board, including the PCI 3.0 slot on the side of this thing that enables us to get a lot of performance potential from a GPU. And this is just a way better, more advanced piece of hardware that allows you to take advantage of a lot more software capabilities that you couldn't with the original Zima board. So when it comes to running local AI, uh, LLMs, uh, when it comes to video encoding and rendering of a Plex media home server with your Zima board too, it just becomes that much more advanced and that much more capable, not only with the onboard CPU, but also with an external GPU if you did want to hook one up. Now, the big question is always the price. And this particular model, the eight gigabytes of RAM along with uh, the 32 gigs of onboard EMCC memory uh, comes in at $180 right now on Kickstarter if you decide to back the Zima board. At the same time, you can get the upgraded version with 16 gigs of memory and 64 gigs of storage for around $250. So overall, from a price perspective, this thing is extremely cost effective. If you were to look at, let's say, buying a NAS, and I have plenty of experience uh, in terms of both setting up, configuring, getting up to speed with both Synology, Ugreen, and building my own home NAS, um, it's hard to beat the Zima Board 2. At $180 all in and only having to purchase the drives separately, the performance you get out of this chip along with the built-in dual two and a half gig ethernet, uh, the USB ports, built-in display port. It's so hard to beat deal at that price point. So I'm really interested to hear what you guys want me to do next with the Zima War 2. I have a lot of cool ideas in my head, but I wanna hear from you guys. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, get subscribed to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one.